Hello everyone, this is Kurugu and welcome to another episode of the Minecore Feed the Beast Monster Server. This is episode 2, and if you've watched my last episode you'll remember that we set up these pulverizers, resin furnace, and basically general thermal expansion stuff with a hard energy cell. Now, I've not really done anything since last episode, but I did say I had a big project planned out for spawn. But at the end of last episode I also made some of this working glass, and I think I'm going to put it to use right away. So, what I'm really wanting to do is go into these strong boxes, because it'll be handy to go over there and have all my stuff with me. Now there are several tiers of the strong box up to the Enderium resident, and I believe they're quite a hassle to make, but we'll get into that in the future. For now, I'm wanting to go, I think, as high as reinforced. This is where our hardened glass comes in. Now, we can go for the strong box. Now, actually, we can go straight into the hardened, which is just using the tin and invert at the same time. But I'm going to go step by step to show you the difference between the strong box, hardened, and reinforced. So we should have enough resources here to make the hardened, the strong box, which is just a chest and some tin, which should be over here. And I will get me more and more resources with this as well. Now the strong box has a few good features. One, it's not that big a box in this size, and really that's the biggest change between these is the storage size. But you'll notice this little tab at the side here, which is says owner Kurugu. There is public access, which is the open lock, restricted access, which is for friends list. I'm sure there's a command that lets you add people to friends list, and owner only. So if I click owner only, I am the only person able to get access to these things. And if anybody else comes along and tries to right click on it, it just won't open. The other good feature about this is if I do something like that, and let's get some of these. If I do this, right click with the crescent hammer, you'll see it tells you what's in there. Five chests, four new max servos. So the next time I put this down, my items are still in here. So, let's see what we can get from upgrading this. And the next one up should be the Invar, I believe. So something like this. And we'll have a hardened, energy, hardened strong box up here. Which is in the region of our chest, I think. Standard chest is three. This is of course is slightly bigger than a standard chest. But I think we want to go a step further than that. So, if we go a step further, I believe it's not like that, it's like this. Reinforced. Let's see what we get in there. And I believe that is a double chest. So we now have a portable double chest, which is probably similar to our backpack here. But it's just nice having a chest that we're able to carry things in. So I'll be filling this up with various items and getting prepped for our project over at spawn. So I'll see you there. Before I go over to spawn, I should probably point out what happened. I didn't really point out in episode last episode, but I had these eight diamond door, and I managed to get these by quite a surprise actually. I was in the nether, and if I show you how I got these, the recipe, I had this nether diamond door, which I passed in the nether and not thought nothing of it, and I picked up two of them, just picked it up, and I thought, great, a couple of diamonds, never bad, and then I saw what I could do with Mimikite. Mimikite has various uses in this, from being able to make quarries of some kind to actually just doubling, so taking iron ingot, one Mimikite, double it, gold with four, double it, and you can also use it for eight of them for a diamond, and you can actually smelt with it as well, if I can find some of those recipes. They've used as fuel, Let's see else there is. 239 pages of it, so there are several uses. You can even copy portal guns. But you'll see here, stabilized, reinforced, so you can smelt and double. That might be a handy one to have. And a lot of these are doubling and smelting. What I came across was to use it with the diamond ore. So I got two nether diamond ore and maybe kite to give me four. And what I can do with this is I could smelt it for a diamond, but I could pulverize it for two. So theoretically, my two nether ore could turn into 16 diamonds. 
So I'm going to do that just now and that should give us 16 diamonds head start along with, I believe I'm mining got for a few diamonds as well, being here. I've got 9, so 9 plus our 16, so I'll have a good start for diamonds which means I could go for factorization down the line, but I just thought I'd include you in that. So I'll go back to prepara preparing for our little spawn project and where I'm going to lay it out and all things involved with that. So I'll see you. Just finalising getting everything together, I think that's all the resources, all I have to do now is grab the machines. Ooh, that's our 3 machines our conduits and luckily our, rest, our energy cell will actually retain its power and these are all empty so I'll grab that three dynamos fluid ducts and an aqueous accumulator I don't know what blocks me I'll clean that up later but I shouldn't need anything down here really hmm. Just thinking about what I'm doing my project there, that might be an idea. And I'll sleep through the day and head over there. So I've got a pulverizer, accumulator, furnace, engines, fluid ducts, energy conduits, energy cell, and induction furnace. And we're good to go. Missed one. Right, so I'll sleep through the night to meet you over there and we can get building. So my plan for my project is this wall here. What I'm actually wanting to do is basically for everybody who starts to get a variety of blocks that they might find handy that is renewable and can be automated. So what I'm going to do is I'll put my stuff down here and grab my crafting table and put that there and grab some wood. And the best way I'm going to do this is I'm going to mostly be going with barrels. And it's not going to be factorization barrels. And let's see if I can remember the recipe here. It's going to be do it this way. Ah, I think it was logs. Alright, better barrels, which means I think I'm going to need some more wood. But basically I'm going to fill the wall with these better barrels and that way they're upgradable and you can actually, let me see if I can get upgrades the upgrades and it is this one's here yeah that's some of the upgrades, storage upgrades I believe yeah, better barrel, couple of pistons, makes an upgrade so you can upgrade in different varieties of if they end up taking more, needing more space, you want more of those blocks if it's in demand. Then we can upgrade the barrel so we'll have a bigger reserve for it. But since I just noticed that I needed logs and not planks, I'm going to go chop down a couple of trees and be back in a second. But that is generally our plan here, is just to make this wall full of these barrels with various items. And in the back here to have all the automation involved to make that happen. So I'll be back with a couple of trees, I'll see you then. I think instead of worrying about the barrels, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to skip ahead to the next step and that is to make a tree farm. So a tree farm should be able to get me the wood once it's set up and running and then I can get these barrels later as long as I can mark roughly where these were. So as long as I know that, because I might be moving these barrels, but I'll leave the wall in the same place. But this is space for a planter. And the planter is from Mine Factory Reloaded. So if I do that, Mine Factory Reloaded, we can see there's the harvester for harvesting the plant, which means an even invar axe with a machine frame and a few other things. And the planter is a flower pot, pistons, some copper, and plastic sheets. These plastic sheets is from raw plastic, which we can get from pretty much any source of rubber. So because we've got those industrial craft trees outside, I've managed to get 32 of these. So that means if we were to just clear this and get ourselves a furnace, and maybe two just to speed this up a bit. Then we can do this. Put half stack in there, half stack in there. 
there. Get some charcoal. So they have a stack, half of half a stack. So it's two in there and two in there. And that will get us our rubber, which we can then re-smelt to turn it into plastic. So I'm going to do that, and once that's ready, I will get on to the next stage. So we now have enough raw plastic to make these raw plastic sheets. So that should be able to do for our planter, which will need a couple of pistons and a machine frame. So, there we go. And you get some iron, redstone, we should have planks, and cobble, and that should do for our pistons. And you should need copper as well, actually. Planter, redstone reception coil, which is gold, glass, and gold. So, machine frame, probably two of them, a reception coil, two of them, a piston, two of them, and finally our flower pot. should have a planter. And while we're here let's just make the harvester so we're going to need shears. An invar axe. So I should have invar here, three of them. And I thought they would make some sticks. Reception coil, gold, plastic sheets, machine frame. I'm missing here, so machine frame, plastic sheets, invar, shears. Got one here, one there. Reception coil, gold, harvester. So that's our two main parts of our tree farm here. Now they do require power and saplings. So let's go set that up just now. So for the planter I'm going to put this here. Now we really do need to be on top to see where it is. So let's get up there. And if you look at this interface you'll see there's a yellow at top there. Which means that this is that direction. It's going to be relatively unimportant to us as we're going to be putting it all to oak saplings anyway. But that will be a good use for us anyway. I'm going to just put that in there. Now you'll see there's energy, work and idle. Now it'll have a larger idle for when it's based up, but it's basically how often it checks to plant. The work is if there's work to be done and how long it's going to take to do it. And the energy is going to do its left. And we're going to use RF. So we're going to need 8000 RF to charge this. And the harvester I'll probably put in the wall here actually, I think. So it'll be a good place as any. And the crest and the hammer also works with these tools, I believe. Yes, it does. And let's put this back up a second. Build the tunnel on the back there. And put that down. I'll see if that's a good place for it or not. It's actually going to be in the other side of the wall. Hmm. Perhaps we could put it into this side here. Right, I'm going to move this side there and I'll just back this side. I'm going to run the same power generation style as I did earlier on with the piston dynamos. So I'm going to build the aqueous accumulator down here with two buckets of water. One there. One there. And I should have an aqueous accumulator in this chest. There it is. And the three dynamos, along with the fluid ducts. And the energy conduits. So put that down there. Along to here. Three dynamos. And the energy conduits. Why I did break that? It's forged multi-part, it means you can't 
actually have them behind there. And we'll need the energy cell, so it'll be handy to have. Um, I think I'll put that there actually. So I'll put the cell there. Turn that off at the bottom and off at the top. Let's open right, that's the output. That'll be input, and that'll be out. So in a minute I'll put that into power and I'll just run that out to here as well. I can run it up to the harvester because it requires power as well. And it has options for shearing leaves, no, small shrooms, no, jungle wood, no. So our next step really is just to give this sapling. So it's got some saplings, it's got that. We'll need somewhere to put the items, so we'll have a spare chest here for now. I have a few spare chests for now, just need the one. And put that down uh, put here. I'll need some item ducks. Now we did get the hardened glass to make these, and I think it was ten it's width, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And I think only twelve. I'll need a few more than that in the long run, but that should do for now. And we can just put that there. Now if I'm not mistaken, this actually auto-ejects, so I don't believe it requires anything special. So I'm just actually, what I might want to do is to get a chest. Let's do this one here. Or not. Get our chest. Make a buffer at the harvester. That way, I'll always have a bit of reserve. If it wants to get sword going, then I can do this part here. Set that to an output. That dense back here. Set the top part to output. And I can either do a redstone signal, which I might just do actually, in here. Grab a lever. And then connect these up. Receiving power, should get planting. Let's go up top to see. Sleep through the night. There we go. Let's see what we've got. We're an Enderman. I don't see no Ernie Pearls if it's going. It doesn't quite work like that. How it does work, however, is it needs to be one block below the dirt. So if I put a dirt block there, put this planter there, and it'll probably be better for me now to run the conduit here with the energy cell. Put there. Input, output there. Split evenly. There's the power. We should just make a staircase out of here. There we go. And now it's got saplings in it. You should see it plants in a three by three. Had it had enough saplings. For the moment that's fine as we don't have any saplings, but I would like this to go out to the edge, which I believe is an extra three, which if we go on to the upgrades for this is an increase of three, which is ten, so we need a bit of plastic, gold nugget, redstone and tin. We'll probably need to do the same increase for this and orientate it the right way to increase the area, which we'll probably have to do sooner. 
For the moment, however, I will just do a smaller farm setup. So take this away. Put our energy conduit here. Our harvester there, and extend our end ducts. are less than a full block so it's hard to jump out of. I will tidy all this up and expand it but for the moment this should do. Nice little chest for a buffer and redstone signal and set that out. There we go. So that'll do for that and that way it'll work on a smaller farm just now when it's still set up we'll just move this back a bit. But that'll do for now and once these trees get going we can worry about expanding it once we have more saplings. As for the rest of it however I do have plans and I'll do some charcoal in here while I remember. Did have some over here. I do want to set up in the corner here is an aqueous accumulator setup. So I'm going to get two more of those, uh, the this extruder. I'll have one of these, but I really want another one. So let's see what's involved in making that. I get the recipe for it machine frame, servo, tin gear, piston. So what do I need? Should have some servos in here. We just need a whole lot of those machine frames actually. Let's make a bunch of them. One, two, three, four should do just now. And I just said the recipe for this. Tin gear. Do I have another version of tin gear? Or just the one? Yep, yeah, there's stone tin gear upgrade. So if we take the stone gears we have and shove tin somewhere. this up a little bit. Oh, well, I actually need that. And ten. There you are. Stone gears. Ten. Ten gears. Oh, actually, we'll need more of them. Go and aqueous accumulator recipe again. Servo glass piston. Piston will probably need a few of these. What am I missing here? I have wooden blanks. We should have two aqueous accumulators. And then I'll put one here and one here. I'll rotate that one slightly. Okay, and I want to set this one up to output on the right. Close all inputs. Input in the back, output on the right, and this one to Input on the right, output on the back. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is take one of our mini chests, a bit of iron, and I'm going to upgrade it. I want to turn this into 
into a iron chest. For any of you who aren't familiar with the iron chest or well, yeah, the iron chest mod, it's basically just regular chests that you upgrade to, in this case a double for the iron, when you're surrounded by the higher grade tier metal. Now what I would like to do is here, and I'll clean up the hole outside soon, get a fluid duct. Be able to get in there with it. And that should connect with water. If I do that up there, and I can, not that it harms anything, but I'll just put it here. Ooh, we've got some wood. That'll be nice. Let's see if this works in a second. Just harvest the wood coming there. There we go, saplings coming down. There's the wood. There's the saplings. So our tree farm is functional. Now we just need to expand it in time. But as I was saying, water into here means water into there. And we saw the second turn this sound down a fair bit. Now we saw cobble when it was just infinite. We had a bit of lava, a bit of water, infinite cobble. If we want smooth stone, however, it actually uses the water but leaves the lava. So now that we've got an infinite supply of water, we can now produce smooth stone on an infinite basis. So all I need to do is get a bucket and get my lava tank and put one bucket of lava each on this. So if I take this on smooth stone mode, that one on smooth stone, and we can just fill it with one bucket of lava should be all we need. And there we go, should now be getting smooth stone. And it'll open into this chest so when I have a nice little buffer for whatever we're going to be doing with it, because it will take time to produce to begin with, and we'll have a double chest buffer of this that will then go put into a barrel. Okay, now let me get this running for a while, get the wood collected, and I'll meet you back in a few seconds after a small short break. And we're back after that break. Now, I want to make a slight alteration to this the moment and that is to somewhat automate this process here to put saplings back in. Now if we just do this we're going to get all the wood, everything comes off of it, apples, the lot. But what we can do is if we take our pneumatic servo we can install that there and then with an open hand right click and whitelist, if I can get a sapling here actually, to whitelist to only put in saplings. So that way only this sapling will go back into the planter, meaning that we won't have these gaps we've got just now. And it seems like the harvester isn't actually getting all the saplings. Now we'll get a few of them and it'll keep it enough to be going, but it's good to be manually there just to be able to process a little bit. And once this is in here, everything's replanting, and we'll be very shortly able to expand the size of this again. And this will take everything that isn't whitelist. And to make sure that this gets priority for the moment, what I'm going to do, or definitely actually, is set this to vacuum mode. What vacuum mode does, and I'll go through all the modes, is this is standard. And an item duct which is standard, it will go to the closest active inventory. So the chest is the closest to the output. If we set this to dense mode, what that basically means is that it makes this pipe much further away. Now that's not what we want, that's the opposite of what we want. So the opposite of dense is vacuum. That means there's a now a vacuum and it'll act as if this is first priority so it'll go straight past this chest, straight to the vacuum and into here, right up until this is full. Once this is full, then it'll go to the chest. And this chest will be replaced by our barrel system and wall over here. So that's that for now and it's about to get very cramped very quickly in here. The next thing I'd like to do is actually I should get another aqueous accumulator. One aqueous accumulator later, we can now put this in place. Now what I want to do with this one is to make it for cobblestone and I think one of the best places I could put this is just in the floor, out the way, and that way it'll be off to there, output on the right, off and output on the back. And what I'm going to do is get another iron chest here. So I'm just having enough iron on me, got plenty of chests on me, let's make another iron chest and put this one here. 
Now, what I can't well actually have to do though is get some water. So I'll just nip down here quickly. I just quickly remove this. That'll give me enough for a bucket from here. And should have another bucket. So well, I'll just quickly make an infinite source just for the time being in here. And then I can put everything back to the way it was. Two so the accuracy accumulator was there, and we had a fluid pipe here, and this was all marble, good as new. And that way I can take one bucket of water into here, one bucket of water into here, and also one bucket of lava into each. And that way we should be able to make cobble from now on. So we have a chest of cobble and a chest of smooth stone. And we're slowly getting our wood, saplings and apples. Although I'm not seeing much apples at the moment. And we are using all the saplings we're getting. So now I just need to know what we're going to do next. What I want to do next is going to be to up upgrade the range on the planter and the harvester. And if I believe I said it was tin that we needed, put an increase of three. So let's see what we need for that. Some plastic, some tin, a gold nugget, and some redstone. Well, we've got the gold nuggets. But do I have the tin? Is the question. We have tin. I think that basically means we've got everything we need. So if we go to the tin. I have enough for two, and sadly they don't stack. So I don't think we need that just now, or this, or some dirt. Actually, we do need the dirt. So we can go and upgrade this. That should be fine. For the planter, it's going to be a simple case of hitting the increase button, and we're done. And for this, we need to retrieve it from a baby zombie. My harvester. Tell me I didn't just lose the harvester. Okay guys, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I did actually lose the, lose the harvester there, but I quickly went and made a new one. But it seems that I've already hit past that half hour mark. I like to keep my videos around the half hour. So it looks like this is going to be a two part project. So, so far we've got the planter and I've got the harvester in my inventory right now. So what we need to do now is just basically to move this. We'll have an active tree farm that will be producing into this chest here. We've established smooth stone, cobblestone generation. And we've also got charcoal powered steam dynamo. So as long as we power the charcoal, then we can get wood. And we'll eventually get around to making that into charcoal to power itself. So just to end this episode, what I'm going to do is move this over so that we are actually having an automated tree farm of some kind. So move that, get rid of this, fill back up the holes, and we can put the harvester. Oh yeah, I need to move this because I think there's a bug with them just now. So get a right duct. Chest. And get our harvester to face this way. There we go. And I'll go ahead and throw our upgrade in there. So as long as it has power, which it should, it should be able to reach this once the idle runs out. Although it can be a little dirty at times. Anyway, I have, I have faith that it will reach this area. So once it chops down some of these trees, it will be back in action. We just need to feed it charcoal every now and then. Ah, there it goes. And we'll be getting an excess of wood. Next episode, I plan to fully finish this little area here and get our barrel system up and running. So, I know this video is incomplete, but I hope you enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, please leave, uh, leave a like and subscribe. 
and hopefully I'll see you next time.